Shout hallelujah. Why don't you rise up with me? In this covenant family day. Lift up your voice and give him glory. For that which he said to do. He said to beautify every family. Lift up your voice and say father thank you. Thank you. For that which you are about to do in our family, we say thank you. Lift up a voice and give him glory for that which he will be doing in this covenant family day. Why don't you appreciate it? Father, we have come to give you glory in this covenant family day. For that which you are set to do, we say thank you. 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 Now begin to go before him. Look unto him. That issue concerning your wife. That issue concerning your husband. That issue concerning your children. That has been a pain in your heart. Why don't you cry before him? Say, Father, today let the light of the world shine upon my family lift up my voice father today let the light of the world shine upon our family and put away every shame every reproach that i have been passing through father today today let your light shine upon my family and bring beauty upon my family oh father by the light of the world glory bless bless every family every family by the light of the wall that will be shed today father let my family be blessed let every shame let every reproach let every board let every weight that has been a pain in my heart be rolled away let it be terminated today father today Today, let every family be blessed. Change the situation, the story of every family for good. Beautify every family upon this mount. Today, Father, even by the communion, by the blood and the flesh, empower every family for glory, victorious and triumphant living. Father, cause every family to excel today cause every family to excel today we have no sense give him glory give him glory thank you father blessed be your holy name for in jesus precious name i know you have a testimony the pastors are waiting ensure that those testimonies are documented please let's put those beautiful hands of ours together for the lord let's make it better and better even as we invite the choir let our king be lifted high, you say. Let our king be lifted high.
to the kingdom. In the house. In the house. Le barato shakalaka. Le brando zozo kete. tonight put your hands together for Jesus and give him a glorious shout of praise Woo!
If you are happy to be in this covenant a family day, put those lovely hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Greet your neighbor on the right, on the left, and say you are welcome. Hallelujah. Please let's comfortably have our seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. On behalf of Jesus, the head of the church and God's servant in the house, I welcome you all to this covenant family day as we are going to be calling ourselves to worship as we'll be taking our scriptures from Psalm 124 from verse 1 to verse 8 Psalm 124 from verse 1 to verse 8 we'll be reading responsorially I'll take verse 1, you take verse 2 until we get to verse 8 are we in Psalm 124? if you are there, say I am there if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now may Israel say, verse 2. Then they had swallowed us up quickly. Some say, God forbid. When their wrath was kindled against us, verse 4. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6. Seven. Our soul is escaped. Can I hear you believing? Amen. 
as a bird out of the snares of the fowler the snare is broken and we are escaped verse 8 together our help is in the name of the Lord who had made heaven and earth and the Bible speaking there in verse 7 it says our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler the snare is broken and we are escaped and I seek us escaping all the fowls of the wicked one in our families in the name of Jesus Christ put those lovely hands together for Jesus Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In a moment, we are going to be on our feet and begin to pray for this service. We are praying for ourselves. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this covenant family day, grant peace and quietness to every silent family by, by the word and the communal table. Say, Amen. amen. Hebrews 2, verse 14, as for as much them as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Devil shall be on feet. I begin to pray. Pray for your family. Lift up your voice. I begin to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this covenant family day, grant peace and quietness to every silent family by the word and the communal table in the name of Jesus God lift up your voice and begin to pray Father in the name of Jesus in this covenant family day grant peace and quietness to every silent family by the word and the communal table in the name of Jesus God Father the place of peace we are asking for peace and serenity for every family in the name of Jesus God. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this covenant family day, grant peace and quietness to every silent family by the word and the communion. Table in the name of Jesus, every family, every silent father, Lord, today, covenant day of family. Grant them peace in the name of Jesus. All oh, round peace, all oh, round peace. The prince of peace, grant them all oh, round peace by the word and the communal table in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this covenant family day, grant peace and quietness to every son's family by the word and the communal table. Pray. He said, and for as much then as the children are partaker of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise to part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is a devil by the blood. Lord, destroy every one of the devil in every family in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood and the word every work of the devil in every family shall be destroyed shall be destroyed shall be destroyed shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood let me walk up the devil shall be paralyzed in every family in the name of Jesus Christ by the word by the word every silence Lord shall turn to testimony in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Lord Never prayed. Put your hands together and take your seat. Praise the Lord. Somebody who is ready to celebrate God, the more put your hands together for Jesus and make it loud. In this covenant family day, it is announcement time. 
Are you celebrating Jesus? You are welcome. On behalf of the resident pastor, I welcome you to Winner's Chapel Swale, the home of breakthrough, science, and wonder. In this Covenant Family Day, the God of this commission will visit you in this service with salvation, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the prophetic focus for the month of September 2021 is goodness, godliness is profitable unto all things. First Timothy 4 and verse 8. And number three, our daily covenant hour of prayer. Our covenant hour of prayer holds this week from Monday 13th through to Saturday 18th, September 2021. Don't miss it. Time is 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. daily. Number four, Believer's Foundation Class through what about Baptism. Believer's Foundation Class holds every Monday and it is for new converts and new members who have not been baptized in immersion by in water by immersion. Water baptism comes immediately after the foundation class. Please come with a change of clothes. Time is Monday, 13 September 2021, by 4 p.m. Number five, praise God. Special turnaround prayer hour. Are you clapping for Jesus? <laughs> Experience supernatural turnaround encounter at our weekly prayer services. Date is Monday, 13 September 2021. Time is 5 p.m. Please bring your prayer requests as you come for quick answers. Number six, good news. Junior Bible School, JBS. The 2021 Junior Bible School, JBS September edition begins tomorrow, Monday, 13th, all through to 24th September 2021. Junior Bible School, JBS, September edition is for children and teens. Registration per child is 1,200. All students must resume for classes by 7.30 prompt. Number seven, countdown to International Youth Alive Convention, IAC 2021. Are there youth in the house? Celebrate God. The annual youth a live convention, IAC 2021, is just two days to go. Team is in pursuit of excellence. Date is 14th through to 19th September 2021. Venue is Kenalan Otta. Note, all participants are expected to register with the sum of 500 Naira registration commences immediately and is ongoing. Transportation through and through Canada and for this event shall be communicated soon to all use from Bayesa. The all use from Bayesa shall be going as a delegation. Praise the Lord. Are you celebrating Jesus? <laughs> Number eight, covenant naming. To the family of Mr. and Mrs. Aruba Sardane is born a bouncing baby boy. The baby came on the 6th of September 2021. And the covenant naming comes up on the 13th September 2021 at their residence, a Keki housing estate, road 4, block 5. And the entire church should please be in attendance. Number nine, midweek communion service. Good news. Our midweek miracle communion service this week shall be a special turnaround service tag. No more luck. Are you celebrating Jesus? We shall be enforcing the power of the turnaround by prayer and fasting. Date is Wednesday, 15th September 2021. We should be waiting on the Lord in a fast and prayer to break in church with the Holy Communion. Time is 5 p.m. Invite someone for a miraculous experience in God's presence. Number 10, admission into Covenant University. Good news. The admission into Covenant University for 2021-2022 academic session is ongoing. All qualified applicants are to log in into the university website www.admission.covenantuniversity.edu.org for details of an application process. 
and also admission into Landmark University. Good news. The admission into Landmark University for 2021-2022 academic session is also ongoing. All qualified applicants are to log on onto their website for necessary processes. Number 11, wedding ceremony. There shall be wedding solemnization between Brother Stephen Ogunduin and Blessing Joseph. If you are clapping for Jesus, clap better. It shall take place on the 18th of September 2021 at Living Faith Church Swale. All members should come and be part of the joy of these brethren. Time is 10 a.m. For further information, please check the notice board. Number 12, enlistment into full-time pastoral service. The enlistment into full-time pastoral service within this ministry for 2021 continues. Interested candidates who want to pick pastoral enlistment for are to check the notice board for necessary website to log in or go to the church office to take the hard copy of the form. Number 12. In number 13. Winner Satellite Fellowship. The Winner Satellite Fellowship holds at our various locations this Saturday, 18th September 2021. Please locate the closest venue with the WSF banner and be part of it. Time is 5 p.m. Number 14. Recommended books of the month authored by Bishop David Oyerebo include Walking in the Newness of Life, Conquering Controlling Powers, The Blood Triumph. All these titles are available also at the www.dominiononlinestores.org or Amazon Store or Apple Online Store. All, there's all members and entire family of winners are admonished to take advantage of these spiritual materials available at the bookshop for their spiritual edification and nourishment. Turn around, era door, and car stickers are also available at the Dominion Bookshop. Get some for your friends and family. Number 15, good news. Next Sunday at Winners Chapel Swale. Next Sunday at the 19th September 2021 shall be our special anointing service. Tag enough is enough service. Are you celebrating Jesus? Invite your friends and family for encounter with God that will provoke the power to enforce your quick turnaround. Service time for the three services is first service 7 a.m., second service 8.45 a.m., and third service 10.30 a.m. May the Lord bless you as you are there to this announcement in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody said for a change of story in your, in your family this morning, shout the loudest, hallelujah. In Psalm 119, verse 46, the psalmist said, I will speak also of thy testimonies before kings, and he said, I will not be ashamed. In this covenant family day, it is testimony time. Put those hands together for Jesus as we welcome Mary, Jake, and Saul, and Pastor Isaac, okay, I have to come share their testimonies. The better you clap, the faster they come. The better you clap, the faster they come. Make those hands bigger and better for Jesus. Step forward very quickly to share your testimony. Tell us your name and what the Lord has done in one minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Abimere Theodore Brekalto. I have come to return all the glory to the good God of this commission concerning my sister-in-law. On oh, Wednesday on the first, our trumpet service, my younger brother called me that his wife is in labor for three days, that I should come. I told him that I'm already in the church. He said I should come. I said no, that after church I will come. And the, the first word, pastor declared, he said this is the ninth month and God is going to deliver everything to our hand. And I said amen. And after church, I went to FMC. The doctor said our womb is ruptured, that there is nothing like delivering, that they are going to carry out operation and they are on strike. Somebody that close to her called them. I said, no, let me pray with her. He said, no, you win us. Every time you come with your mountain. I said, let me pray with my sister-in-law. 
Then if God did not answer our prayer, that means the, 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 everything that comes out from the mouth of our servant never go in vain. Lo and behold, I pray with her. I said, Doreen, you will deliver your baby because there is nothing like operation in my family. And Papa, our daddy said, this is the nine months and you will deliver. And she said, amen. After some time, the doctor, the one of the nurses came that she said she wants to poo. The, doc, the nurse is now called the doctor. He said he's not coming. Lo and behold, when the other nurse came, my sister-in-law gave birth successfully, strong and healthy. Praise the Lord. And that's how the winner came with a prophetic mantle and a prophetic word. And there was safe delivery. Look those hands bigger and better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am Isaac Okaja by name. I want to appreciate this good God for what he did for my family. I have been writing all this while that pastor has been saying that we should write prayer points. My prayer point has been for my daughter who from the first time she became pregnant, she was diagnosed of a condition that was induced by pregnancy that is called eclampsia. And uh, all this while I was praying, God answer my prayer. And yesterday, this my daughter gave birth to a bouncing baby girl. I return to give God glory. And secondly, what has been a challenge in my life that I didn't want to put it as a prayer point. I had it in mind that when I have money, I will do it. But miraculously, God raised somebody to provide for me beyond my imagination. Favor came powerfully to settle all beyond what I even wanted to do myself. To God alone, beyond the glory. The prophetic word for miracle alas, favor alas, is answering in this assembly. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, let's give God thanks that God is a good God. I'm sure you can clap better and better for these wonderful testimonies. Hallelujah. In this covenant family day, it is offering time. I thought you would clap better now. It is offering time, blessing time. Please package your offering, your tithe, and all that you have vowed to worship the Lord. Label them appropriately. Remember, if you are taking advantage of the electronic channels, please. Check the details on the screen and pay through the internet. While we remind ourselves with the word of God in Malachi 3, verses 3 and 4, paraphrase, Jesus himself will sit to purify. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier and purge us so that we can be able to give our offering in righteousness. Praise the Lord. He purges us so that we can be as gold and silver to offer our offering in righteousness. And in verse 4 it says, when we do so, God will accept our offering as a, as a pleasant offering. It will be pleasant unto the Lord. Until your offering is in righteousness, it's not pleasant to God. And so we are going to rise up if you are packaged of this and begin to ask God. Because you have come purified. Because you have come purified, purged. And now you are offering your offering in righteousness. Lord, let my offering be pleasant unto you. Let my offering be pleasant unto you. Now lift it up and begin to pray. Pray that prayer. In this month of holiness, Lord, I have come with my offering, my tithe, and all that I have come. I have come to offer in righteousness. I therefore, Lord, ask you to receive it. Receive it. Let it be pleasant unto you, Lord. Let it be pleasant unto you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise for putting something in our hearts so that we can come and give it in righteousness. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now lift it up. Lord, we have come to give our offering in righteousness. May you therefore, may this our offering and our tithe be pleasant unto you. Father, it is your word 
he that soweth in tears will reap in joy. For everyone we are going to reap in joy. Let our harvest be multiplied. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let everyone begin to receive multiplied harvest. From this day forward, we will never lack. For every hand that is lifted up, it will never beg. It will never lack. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Please take your seat as you cast your offering with joy and we invite the ministry of the choir to minister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
We magnify your name, second Sunday of the month of September, the month of our delivery. The lines are falling onto us in pleasant places. Can you give him praise for making you to make church today? Give him praise. We praise you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. He said unto Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and in verse uh, 3, Through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And in today's service, we are enforcing that covenant. It's our covenant family day. We are enforcing. Once we say it's a covenant day, we are enforcing the forces of the covenant to work for us. Today I pray by the force of this covenant that the Lord made with Abraham, your family shall be blessed. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Please connect those scriptures. Genesis 12, 3 and Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham will come upon the Gentiles. The blessings of Abraham. What is the blessings of Abraham? Genesis chapter 12, verse chapter 24, verse 1. He was old and stricken in age, and the Lord has blessed him in all things. That's the third scriptures. Glory to God. The Lord has blessed him in all things. This is a word session. It's not an entertainment session. So his scriptures shall be true in. Make sure your spirit enter into it. Genesis 12, 3. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. And Genesis 24, verse 1. The program of God is for your family to be blessed. That is no one should be struggling in your family. That's what it means. No one should be sick in your family. No one should be down in your family. Today, by the power that backs up the covenant, I declare today, your family blessed. Every generational cause, generational limitation, generational affliction, generational siege that is ravaging your family shall be shut down today. Say amen like somebody that is in church never come to church service here like secular that you just come. I want you to open your mouth. The service has been tacked and you must jump into it. As you take your seat in a moment, you are going to write the name of your family. Anything hanging on the name of that family must be destroyed. Whatever they have put on that family name that is making everybody to be under if they add all of you together as a family, you are not more than 100,000. There is a force that is sitting upon the glory of your family. As you write down that family down, I'm going to be speaking a word. He confirmed the word of the servant. And that lead and yoke and limitation over your family shall be taken away. And we're going to take another session where you are going to mention people in your family that must be rescued. You mentioned their name. Rescue from sickness. Rescue from diseases. Rescue from trouble. And every force that is controlling your mother's children must leave them today. Lift up your hands and pray. Lord, bless me in this service today. 
Bless me. I don't want to come to church like coming to church. Let this covenant family day answer over my family. Let it answer over my family. Lift up your voice like somebody that is there. My family must be delivered. It's a family deliverance service. It's a family deliverance service. We are going after evil pattern in your family. We are crushing the forces of evil, controlling your family. There's victory today. Victory today. Victory today. Victory today. Over your family, there is victory today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. We have the blood of Jesus in front of us here. The Bible says, though there were five, they were made nine by the blood of Jesus. Whatever evil pattern, evil affliction, they say all signs in their family, cancer is their family, asthma is in their family. Everyone reach retirement age and end up in the village. Nobody has ever crossed to get to even Yanagoa Airport here. In their life, they have never left Nigeria. A siege over their family that you cannot be more than this. As you take of this communion today, the hold that held you down, the forces that held your family down, shall leave you finally. What none of your generation have ever achieved. You are going to leave the place in race. You are going to open the door. Let me tell you this before I go deeper into the men, what time. God always touched somebody to rescue the family. He held Abraham and delivered the entire family. I pray for you today. I don't want you to be in this service be an onlooker. May God use you to rescue your family. God picked Bishop David Oedeko among his family. He picked him alone. I all came from a family a, 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 a program right now, you know, this weekend. And he was my wife. Like that. My wife. Today, the light that God has put into you will shine into your family. Will shine into your family. Somebody again is rising from your family. Somebody again is rising again from your family. Can you imagine everybody is looking onto you alone? It's not correct. So correct, it's an error. A one rich man in the midst of 20 poor people, all of you are poor. They sap you, sap you, sap you, sap you. You must pray today. Lord, raise that my brother too. Raise that my sister too. I will share everything. They want to do something in the family. It is you that is producing everything. Why? Why? It's not correct. If you are boasting in that, I, you have a problem. You have a problem. Glory to God. I pray for you today. The Lord save you. The Lord save your family. How many want his whole family to be saved? If not all of them, even your, just your mother's children, I think it's okay. That you carry this glory back to the village and the light shine over the village. It will happen through you. They will say it is through the family of so, 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 so person that light enter our family. Not only light of salvation of their soul, light of prosperity. I'm not talking about being born again alone. Born again is okay. It's not just born again and be, and be relevant on the earth. Today, we have Landmark University. I mean, you know, Mara is a light in that place. Glory to God. Lift up your hand. I get prepared. My heart is burning for somebody here. Today, mark frustration, mark the end of frustration in your family. In the name of Jesus. All the trend of this one will marry and return back to your father's house. That one will marry and return back to your father's house. It's a generational cause. No, no, no. Everyone in the family will be married properly and stay in the house right now. Are you seeing the scope of the service of today? Because some people just say family covenant, the covenant, what is it about? That is how it's about. All your families. How many of your family? All of them shall be saved. They shall be delivered. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. One minute. Let's say. Let's, let's get a spirit around here. Let's get the spirit of God. Lord, let this answer for me. Deliver my family. Deliver them my brother. Deliver them my sister. Somebody pray. 
Is somebody praying at all? Somebody praying today? Rescue that, my sister. Destroy that limitation in life of my mother. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. It is done. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for the Lord and take your seat. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. I like you to position yourself. No matter the grace and the anointing the pastor carry, if your heart is not open, it's just a waste of time. Please open your heart for this service. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. All our Sunday service is not just mere service. They are not mere services. They are all special service. Today is Covenant Family Day. I like you to open your heart. Where and where should this work in my life? That's why you should open your heart to come and do in church. Praise God. Write down the, your family name. Write down your family name now. Don't sleep. Don't lose God. Write it capital bold. If it is a compound name, write it. If it is one, one, write it. And we're going to speak on it. Cut a piece of paper and write. Because the blood you are going to drink today, you put it on it. And as you, today is family deliverance. How many have had family deliverance? I don't need to go to your village. There's no need for that. He, he said, he sent his word. And the word rescued them. I don't need to go there. He told the sea, dry. And the sea, dry. He wasn't sitting in front of the sea and said, dry. Mm. He was somewhere and said, dry. And he dried. So I don't need to be there. Jairus came to Jesus and said, I want my servant to be healed. And Jesus said, he's healed now. And the power from that place went. So as I speak on that family name, it will be free. Every force that sat on that family name and said, anyone that is named after this family will not prosper. That thing shall be broken to death. Say amen like somebody I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Remember, godliness is profitable unto all things. That when you live the righteous life, the holy life, then you enjoy the blessing of it. Proverbs 14 34. It said, Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin brings reproach. So when you live the righteous life, when you start in righteousness, then you enjoy the blessing, which is exaltation, lifting, promotion. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach. So righteousness and godliness is profitable. Holiness is profitable holiness is profitable Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 say ye to the righteous it shall be well with him that is the blessedness of righteousness say ye to the righteous what is righteousness Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 departure from iniquity Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, and having this seal, the Lord knoweth those that are his. Let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's righteousness. Departure from iniquity. Anything that messes you up, anything that is unclean, you deliberately, decisively depart from iniquity. That's righteousness. You abhor evil. You despise unrighteousness. You don't celebrate sin. You don't say it's not bad after all. Everybody is doing it. No. You don't smile at somebody that is messing up. No. Glory to God. And I pray for you today. Righteousness will pay you. Coming to church will pay you. Coming to this church will pay you. In the name of Jesus. And we have been going through the series Understanding the Pathway to Godliness. Understanding Pathways to Godliness. Understanding Pathways to Godliness. Understanding Pathway. How do we live the righteous life? That's what it's all about. How do we live, live the righteous life? How do we live the life of godliness? We have seen that in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to 3 when your light comes darkness is destroyed so revelation is a forerunner of revolution 
revelation is the forerunner of revolution. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Darkness cover the heart, gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen in your life. To the extent that Gentiles will be attracted to you, to your light. And kings, that is reputable people, will come to the brightness of your rising. Qualitative people, VIP, shall be people you'll be romancing with. You will not just be small. The Bible says, I will glorify them. They shall not be small. So the people that will be hanging around you will be nobles. You'll be nobles. When your light comes, you will attract, you know, men of timber and caliber. Kings we are, we come to the brightness of your rising. I pray for you today. The God of heaven will lift your head. You will rise again. In the name of Jesus. Everything that is bringing you down shall be shut down today. Glory will answer in your life. In the name of Jesus. First John chapter 5 verse 3. His commandments are not grievous. If he says, be ye holy, you can be holy. His commandments are not grievous. They are not hard. What God tells you are not hard. You have the capacity to live the holy life. You have it. His seed is in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. First John chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. You have the capacity. You have the potential to live the righteous life. You have the strength to say no to every temptation. You have the strength to say no to every suggestion from the devil to misbehave. You have the power he has given you. John 1, 12. As many as received them, he, him, he gave them power to become. You have the power, the capacity, the capability to say no to that devilish habit. He gave them power to be sons of God. You have power to be sons of God. We have power to be sons of God. Glory to God. You have power to be sons of God. God punish the devil. You have power to be sons of God. Say I have a power to be sons of God. You have it. To have it. And as the father is so is the son. The father is holy. So we have to be holy. Glory to God. First Peter, I think in chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 or so, he said, As he is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. First Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. As he is holy, so are we holy. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. As he that has called us is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation all manner of conduct, all manner of lifestyle. Because it is written, be ye holy, for also I am holy. So, and it's not difficult. Because you have the capacity. He has given you the power. Now, if you refuse to walk in the way of holiness, what are the costs? Everything on earth is cause and effect. Cause and effect. What are the costs? of ungodliness. Number one, it block your access to healing and health. In Mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 11, it blocks your access to healing and health. Glory to God. Blocks your access to healing and health. In Mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 11, The man was brought for healing before Jesus. And the first thing Jesus said before he healed him, your sins are be forgiven. Jesus died first for our sin and afterward our sickness. Because the consequence of sin is the sickness. The punishment for sin is the sickness. So Jesus died to remove the sin from our life and the consequence that is attached. So sickness and disease are affliction, the consequences of sin. And so sin has to be tidied up. When sin remains there, the sickness and disease remain there. So Jesus said, your sin is taken away. Now, 
rise up on your feet. So, if you romance with sin and keep iniquity in your life, if you have sickness or disease, the, this disease will stay there. But I pray for you today, every seed of sickness in your body shall be destroyed. James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. He said when you are sick, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now listen. If he has committed sin, he shall be forgiven. Because God wants to heal you. So what will block you from getting the healing must be taken away. So check your life. If there is a sickness that is still there that refuses the prophetic word, that refuses the mantle, refuses the oil, refuses anointing, check your life. There may be one sin that is holding your healing. A lady was there like that. She had issues with her mother-in-law. She doesn't, they don't just flow. She hated her mother-in-law with passion. And on the day of her delivery, she labored for almost three days. Nothing happened. Thank God. They called the pastor to come and pray for her. And that pastor is a pastor that can see things. He's not a pastor that can see. And as soon as she was praying, as he was praying, he saw it. She has bitterness against her mother-in-law. If she can apologize to her, she will deliver now. As soon as she sent message to mama, mama, I'm sorry. Mama is not a witch. It was the bitterness, the spirit of bitterness that blocked her access. As she repented, it was not up to a few minutes, she delivered immediately. You don't know what is working against you. That unforgiving spirit, that hatred for that person, that fight that is still in, inside you. In church, when the person go this, if you want to go this door, you go throughout this door. He's working against you, you don't know. And until that sin is, is repented of, the blockage to your deliverance will be still be there. So, the consequence is a uh, blockage to your healing and health. Number two, it blocks your access to durable riches. Not just ordinary money. Some people have some little few money now. They don't allow people to rest. We're talking about money that's sustainable. We're talking about kingdom wealth. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3 praise the Lord blessed is the man that feared the Lord that's holiness that delighted greatly in his commandment that is righteousness his seed shall be mighty when you say somebody is mighty economic power is stronger than physical and uh, political power true of us without economic power you can't have political power it's money so when they say the man is mighty, he get money. Get money. Mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Blessed means empower to prosper. Now what next? Wealth and riches. That's a dangerous combination. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Wealth and riches. Both financial, material, and human resources is what is called wealth and riches. Financial resources, human resources, and material resources in properties. That's what is called wealth and riches. It's not just money alone. You have control of men. <laughs> you have control of material. And you have control of money. That's what they call wealth and riches. The Bible says it shall be in his house. That is what is called durable riches. Real riches. You will be blocked to, to get it unless you are a man that fears the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 to 3, follow your Abraham, your father, and your mother that begat you. Genesis 22, verse 18, describe your Abraham. He said, Genesis 22, verse 18, because you have obeyed my voice in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You see there? We're talking about blessing that is more than you. Blessing that spread all over the nations. That in all the nations of the earth, your wealth and prosperity and riches spread. While you are not still there, the thing is still flowing. 
as of according to your durable riches. But when you are not righteous, it is cut off. It's cut off. We have many that has name in this country before, but there's no pointer to any of their investment. Am I talking now? As a man is from my tribe, he very wealthy. In those days, they say, you know, um, or if Devorah enter into your wealth and call, they ask him that time. He said, <laughs> he laughed. He said, it is the money that is not enough that Devorah enter. He said, I have not even started spending my money. It is what is just overflow of it is what I'm spreading. But today, you can't point to any of his investment. Two of us. In those days, he has uh, sports that he always sponsors. He has a name, aircraft, uh, paper, and all that. He has bank too, right? Papa even wrote about him in his book, uh, Overcoming Poverty or something, that has investment in 34 nations of the world. If he enters into some nation, he enters like president. But today, after him, it's gone. That's not wealth. The real wealth is that when you are not there, he's still speaking. He's still speaking. Glory to God. I pray for you today. The God of heaven will deliver unto you true riches. I said true riches. Number three, he block your access to help in the day of trouble. Access to help, 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 help in the day of trouble. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1 to 5, Satan is always hanging around. Even when Jesus was delivered in, in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, the Bible says he delivered him. Satan delivered him. Uh -huh. But he still came back. So, there are days that the enemy will bombard us. But our shield should be our righteousness. He said, my righteousness will speak for me in the days of battle. He will speak. And that was what happened to Hezekiah here. A notable prophet went to tell him bad news. You are going to die. God told me to tell you. And it was Isaiah. Isaiah, there is none of his prophecy that failed. He was the one that spoke so much about Jesus coming. He was even still speaking about what is happening today, down in his time. What we are seeing today, Isaiah prophesied at that time. Accurate. Everything he said about Jesus all came to pass. Isaiah, before Jesus was born. So he went to Hezekiah. Hezekiah knew that was the end. But he turned to God. Oh God, remember my integrity. I serve you with holiness. And God said, what do you want? I don't want to die now. Finish. And God gave him 15 years more. His righteousness spoke to him on the day of battle. In Proverbs chapter 1, from verse 8 to 14, he said, I call upon you, you refuse to answer. He said, when you call, I will not answer you. When your day of trouble come, I will not answer you. I will not. So, if unrighteousness is what will block your access to help, because everybody needs help, sir. Everybody there. There are days, no matter how rich you, you reach you are, there are days that something tiny is what makes you to cry for help. Remember Naaman? Naaman was, he was, uh, what is it? He has military power. He was the head of all the military in his country. He has money. But he was a leper. And he had that there's one Elisha that if he prayed for you, that's the end. He went to town. Uh, so he now had to go to the king. He said, I heard there is a man that killed in another country. Give me a letter to the king of the other country so that they can click the So he wrote a letter, diplomatic uh, connection. He got to the king of the nation, delivered the letter to him. The man cried, said, oh, This king wants to kill me. How will I clear somebody's leper? Somebody said, No, 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 no. This thing is for a prophet under you. Send him to the prophet. It was connection. I, you know, Elisha was not a village, whatever. He's an international prophet. The, the diplomatic connection was strange. <laughs> when you read the Bible, you don't see all those things. He, and when he came, the man, no diplomacy and all that, but he will not allow diplomacy and uh, international whatever to encroach into his prophetic grace. He said, this time, there's no protocol. Go and tell him. And the man that is full of protocol said, I thought he would come out. And lay his hand. Protocol has spoiled him. He, he thought everything answered to protocol. And that was it. He would have gone back except some small girl. That was help. That was his help, sir. That, that girl was a saving grace. He would have died in leprosy. He was angry with his pride. 
wanted to go back. The small girl said, Oh, God, let's use a little wisdom here. Uh, wisdom is not reserved for the mighty. I think I have small wisdom. We have gone the long way. Let's just try this, even if it doesn't work. Is it not just to enter water? Ah, can I enter mud water? It doesn't matter, sir. Just come and come out. When you finish here, we'll go and bath in another water. <laughs> but let's try this. He said, yes or no? I will try. He said seven times, so. he says, sir. Just try. I will, be, I will stand with you. If you want me to enter water with you, I will enter. But just try it. Help. Somebody's rescue, somebody's solution now is in the hand of one tiny person. He doesn't know. He's looking here and there. I pray for you this week. You will not be blinded to your helper. I said your helper. God will show them to you. But see, pride wanted to destroy him there. Pride. I didn't know what time I did. I even have to, oh, you know, special swimming pool on my 16th floor. If I want to bath in 16th floor and come and rinse myself in 13th floor, I have it. I can say I should go to one dirty pond there. <laughs> the guy said, it's not about this dirty pond, it's about this your, it's about this your leprosy, sir. <laughs> Praise God. Help, he stops you in the day of hell. In Psalm 33, verse 18 to 19, these are the days of hell, sir. These are the days of trouble. The eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy. Let's go. To deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. To keep them. Righteousness deliver you in the day of famine. In the day of trouble. These are the days of trouble. To see to him that your helper comes. I see the helper answering for you. So when you refuse to live the righteous life, you want to go on your own way. Psalm 37 verse 18 and 19. You just have your access to this hell blocked. The Lord knows the day of the upright. Say the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time. Shall not be ashamed. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Stretch your hand here. I'd like to pray for somebody in this church that his heart is open for this service. Not just come and mark register. That the God of heaven will give you satisfaction in this midst of this recession. Satisfaction. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Don't miss the Wednesday uh, service again. We are going back again to no more lack. This is a season of abundance so that we have enough. You want to do a project, you have so much to do it and you still have leftover. That's it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. No more lack. No more lack. You have more than enough. Leftover is even more than what you spent. That's what we're talking about. And that's what will happen to you. None of any member of Living Faith Church Swally will be a beggar. We will not be a beggar. In the name of Jesus. Lack and want is out of our lives. That's what will make the difference at this end time. That's why you have to destroy the mentality of begging. That's what will make church people to be different. He said they will call us and say, Ah, are you doing it? We are begging here. And you are making it. Ten men shall hold the skirt of him that is a Jew. And say, we have had the Lord is with you. Ah, we are getting leaner. You are getting fatter, fatter and fresher. What's happening here? Teach us of his ways. We need to know. That's the end time saints. The end time saints are not welfare people looking for help. We are the one to help others. And please remember next Sunday, we are going to be taking welfare offering to help the poor. Are you ready for that? God told me that a giving church will always be a wealthy church. So let's make sure we are on the line for this giving. Every month, I've told you we'll be putting things together to help the poor. That is how to leave the company of the poor. To leave the company of the poor, you must be a, a giver. To stop a begging life, you must be start a giving life. So no matter your level, bring something next Sunday to give to the poor. Are you ready for that? 200 naira can save you from all this trouble of begging and hanging around people. Just keep it every month. 200 naira will be giving it out to the poor. And that's why we're having the connection here. And share. It is acts of the apostle's time. Am I talking now? 
they collect from everybody and share for the people that need and the church <laughs> let's work it, it will work for you this church, it will work for us Paul the apostle recognized the Macedonian church he said the Macedonian church are star givers star givers he also recognized the Philippians church those ones are committed to take care of pastors the Philippians church we want to combine the two together we want to be the Macedonian church amen, amen. always bring together he said I'm proud to introduce to you he was talking about the stingy Corinthian church he was talking to Corinthian church they are stingy church they only have everything they will say pray pray anointing anointing is what they know but bring money out mm. and say bring money they'll be speaking in tongue carry your tongue away now tongue will go chop so Paul the apostle had to wrote, write to them specifically he said I want to talk to you about the Macedonian church you are a Corinthian church he said you have grace anointing you can talk very well you prophesy you have all the gifts but you need this grace also check it 2 Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 1 to 10 pray for this grace also you have abound in utterance you have abound in graces and gifts but this gift you don't have it but the apostle told them to their face you don't have it you don't have it and there are churches it's like churches in town there is not only one church. Churches in Macedonia. He said, therefore, as you are bound, see it here. Thank you. You are bound in faith, utterance, knowledge, and diligence. You can clean everywhere in church, but your ten cover no go come out. Put verse eight. I speak not about occasion of your whatever, no commandment, but that you prove the sincerity of your love. If you love God, Jesus, God loved the word and he gave. Now let's go. What is the way out of this blocking of our access to all these blessings? What is the way out? Repentance. What is it? Repentance. Repentance. And no matter how terrible your issues are, no matter how bad you are in sin, repentance will save you. There's a man called Ahab. Say Ahab. This one, this man has what they call generational wickedness. Generational what? His wickedness was a reference point. His wickedness was a reference point. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25 to 29. Now we are making reference point to the righteousness of Job, of Abraham. But this man is a representation, the personification of wickedness. But as God pointed it to him, that his wickedness is terrible. There was none like Ahab. None like Ahab. Can you see? It's a generational wickedness personified. Which did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of God, whom Jezebel, his wife, steered him up. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's go through. And he did very abominable things, following idols, according to as, uh, as the Amorite did, whom the Lord cast before the children of Israel. Run it. Let's go. And it came to pass. When Ahab had those words, he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. Can you imagine? And the Lord said unto Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Check this, I'm saying. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Seeing thou how Ahab humbled himself before the Lord. He, is weak. he has killed many people, though, like which? But because he humbled himself, before me, I will not bring evil in his days. He repented. He repented. So no matter how terrible your ways are, Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 16, he said, put away the evil of your doing. Put it away. Repentance is the way out of wickedness. Watch you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Let's go. He said, Come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. Your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 9 If ye be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. You will eat the good of this land. 
What are the demands, therefore, things you need to do if you say you have repented? One, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain. First John chapter 3, verse 3. He that is of God, purify himself. Purify himself, even as he is pure. Every man that has his hope in him, purify himself. Purify himself. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Take personal responsibility for righteousness. It's not God that will make you righteous. It is you that will make yourself righteous. Jesus humbled himself. If you are a proud man, humble yourself. If you are a negative man, always talking bad of the church and the pastor, shut up. That's how to do it. Humble yourself. If you are the ones that is always hating people, gossiping and talking, stop. If you are the one drinking and going from one party to the other, stop. If you are the one arrived running after women here and there, stop. That's what he's saying. Stop. The path, the path. Abstain from all appearance of evil. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. If it looks like evil, stop. That's a, abstain from it. Don't say one cup will not, feel, will not spoil your Christianity. It will spoil it. Because from one cup glass of, of alcohol, you go into one keg. And you'll be rolling inside. And God does not say we should not drink. He just told us that we should not be drunk. We should not be drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You see, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I say I'm fine. Even if I take four cartons like this, I'm balanced. Don't you say I'm balanced? If I give you a knock now, I'm balanced. I said I'm okay. That's a winner. That's brother and winner. Praise God. Abstain. Whatever will make you dirty, abstain. Whatever will mess up your holy garment, abstain. Cut away from anything that will mess you up. Mark Psalm 1 verse 1. Cut away from it. Number two, flee from sin. This is not even wrong. Flee. Fly. First Corinthians 6 18. Flee from fornication. Flee. Another word for fornication there is sexual immorality. Flee from it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Flee also youthful lust. Youthful lust. Anything that is making, you know, to make that make people to feel that I belong. One thing that has helped me is that maybe because I got born again early, I got born again at 12. I have never in my life to seek to belong. I've never. I think the taste to belong died. Died. Many of the reasons why we mess up today is wanting to please others. We are pleasing others and depressing ourselves. Especially youth. Motivated by peer prayer. Things you don't really want to do because of a friend. Which friend? Flee also youthful lust. You must have value. My wife took her time to teach my children value system. Can't forget the other day she was on phone with her first daughter in uh, Cyprus and was talking to her value. You are going to meet people from everywhere but you must have these are my values. These are my do's. These are my don'ts. Am I talking now? Don't be a believer anything goes. You flow with the tide. You can't be a believer like that. The Bible says, Woe is unto man that follow multitude to commit sin. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. If sinners entice you, consent thou not. You must have the capacity to say, I don't do this. Not that our church, not the drama. You want to marry a lady, you are sleeping with the lady, you put the lady in your house. She born one, she born two. Till today, your parents have seen you as husband and wife. That is not correct. You want to marry, you stay away from sin. All this you are getting belay before you get married. It's not of God. It may be happening to many people. It's not correct. And that brother did it now. Today is even a deacon. Shut up. 
Whosoever is doing it does not make it right. Especially you are a child of God. Is if it is when you are a sinner you did that. That's correct. That's okay. But now that you are born again, you know what is correct. And there are people in church, brothers, that will never want to marry a sister unless the sister sleep with her. What unless you sleep with the lady? What is? Many of our sisters know the reason why you don't see anybody brother talking to them in church is because the brother has made advance to sleep with them. They say no. They say okay then. He's been talking here. He's been burning her. I love you. I love you. I love you. The day he say oh yeah now let's go. The lady say no. I'm a child of God. I can't do that. They say no no no. Brother is doing it. Another brother is doing it. All those sisters. Oh, wow. Bible said thou shalt not follow multitude to do evil. Flee. Say flee. Number three, resist the devil. You will be tempted. Nobody tells you you won't be tempted. Satan will throw nonsense to you. You are the one that will say, no, I'm not. I'm not doing. Not that our church is not doing. If I do this wickedness, I will sin against God. Not that our church, no, they do. If they see us and come. No. James chapter 4 verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Victory is for you today. Today is our covenant, uh, fam, covenant family day. And I need you to know from the scriptures we began with, Genesis 12 verse 3. It said, through the blessing of Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families. So God's program for us from Genesis is that our family be blessed. In Acts chapter 16 verse 31 He said Salvation answer for you And your house And he said unto him Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ And thou shalt be saved And your house And your house And I speak today For every family In living faith church That the power of the Lord Is released to your family I declare salvation. Salvation. Say amen like somebody that is better. If all those, your brother, your sister, your mother, they, they are born again, things will be better in your family. See your brother now in court. Don't mention the name of the court, lest you offend people. Popular court in town is there. See your mother now. She will camp around the kind, kind. See, your father too will be running after all the women from Swali to Ogologo, from Ogologo to Pansha. There is nobody that bad do in your family. Nobody that bad do. You are just the only one, winner, winner, winner. That's not God's program. He said he will save you and your family. See, your sister now has gone to one man's house, born three, the man don't drive and come out, he's in the house. See, the other one that said they go to school, he is in 300 level audio 300 level is 300 level audio audio school you understand audio you know audio money money where you go just go to see you know get out everything haywire in your family there is no one like this you can say this the other one don't mentor don't smoke 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 you go smoke everything codeine and tramadol not a balance for your family but I prophesy today because the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of deep. And God said, and everything, oh, the toto, everything comes orderly. I'd like you to receive this prophetic blessing. Stretch your hand here. Because he spoke to the seed dry, and it dried. Just by one word, everything can come in shape. I speak prophetically over your family today. Let there be light things will begin to fall in place. The God of heaven will begin to put your family in shape. Wayward children will begin to hear the word of God. Lift up those, Lord, lift up those family names. Oh, I speak to that family name. If I know, I will call your family name. But call the family name three times. Call it yourself. 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 I speak on those family names. Receive salvation today in the name of Jesus. Every power that held your, your family, that through that family name you are under siege, I command those yoke broken today. 
Whosoever carried this family name and went to put it on that shrine and said this family will not prosper. No one will rise in this family. I command by the communion today, they are shut down. The glory of your family shall spring forth. I bless your family today. I declare a race for your family today. I declare favor on your family today. Be blessed. So shall it be. Take your seat. Let's get some little understanding by redemption. Our lineage has been changed. We are now members of the household of God. John 1 12. As many as receive him, he gave them power to be sons of God. To become, to become salvation. Put the entire scripture. All this one, you are cutting it. Reduce the size. If it won't come, don't be cutting scriptures, I beg. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to be sons of God. If you are using a hardware Bible, underline that it's pregnant. If I start speaking on sons of God today, we won't live here. To first of all, paint to you your sonship right as a child of God. You are a son of God. The devil is always mad when you say that. Very mad. Because as sons of God, you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You are not co heir A lawyer will explain that for you very well. co heir and joint heirs are not the same. Ask a lawyer. He will explain to you. Same right. That's why the devil said, Jesus I know, Paul I know. So you can cast out the devil in the name of Paul. That's what it means. Joint here, the same right. The same right. The same right. Some people say when you pray, you pray a true Jesus. You don't pray true Jesus. You pray in the name. Jesus is not our intermediary between the Father. We have direct access to God. We only use the authority of the name of Jesus. We have the same right. Have the capacity to say Abba, Father. Kill day. I need help. Jesus does not need to talk to the Father for us. Mm -mm, that's not biblical. We are the one that has direct access. Am I talking now? The same right. That's why you are a son. You are a son. You are a daughter. Satan does not want you to realize that. Anytime when Jesus said, you know, my father, my father, they are always angry. The Jews are very angry. Because once you say you are son, ah, oh, because the Jews has the idea that we are slaves, not son. That's what the other religions are talking about. Because the other religion came from Judaism. But as a son of God, you have the right of sonship with the father. You can talk to God direct. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a pastor. You don't need a church. You, need, you have direct. If you give your life to Jesus, you are the sons of God. Beat your chest and say, I'm a son of God. Beat your chest and say, I'm a daughter of God. I can dwell on that for days. That, that is a normal deliverance. If you understand this, you are delivered already. You, you are delivered if you can understand that. You, that's a rock you can stand upon and tell the devil not here. Glory to God. So you change lineage. You don't belong to those your family again. You belong to the family of God. And once you have realized that fact, <laughs> no devil can hold you by ransom. He just clear out of the way. There are some people the devil don't mess around they, because they know. You need this knowledge. You need this understanding, sir. You need this understanding. And now, you now take that understanding to your family. Once you know you are a son of God, you now tell God, you say you will save me and my family. Finish. So you save your family. I pray for you today. Stretch your hand here. I'm releasing fresh power for you for the salvation of your family. Amen. Through you, your family shall be saved. Amen. Your amen looks weak. Amen. The greatest thing you can do for your family is for them to be rescued by you. They shall be rescued by your hand. Amen. They shall be saved through you. Amen. Receive it with a better amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19, we are no more strangers. No more strangers. No more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. 
and of the household of the family of God. We belong to the family of God. Let me give you another scripture that will help you that I used to use to slap the devil. 1 John 4.4 4. Ye are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you. God is not with us. He's inside us. He's in the Old Testament. God is with us. But in the New Testament, he has his residency in our heart. It's a different matter. We don't have anointing upon. We have anointing inside. We are carriers of his grace. <laughs> we are the past. Now, see, you want to get the dangerous part of it? Do you want to get the dangerous part of it? I have told you you have the same right with Christ. I'm sure some people are having problems. The Bible says, <laughs> it said, the fullness of the Godhead bodily is inside Christ. And Christ is inside us. So what is cross the concluding mathematics? That means the fullness of the Godhead dwells inside you. God punish the devil. Once you have that understanding, Satan can't be oppressing you anyhow. Therefore, today as you take up this communion, every oppression in your family, every affliction in your, you and your family, every trouble on you and your family, I declare you deliver in the name of Jesus. So every generational curse, spell, enchantment associated with biological lineage has no more hold on your life. Has no more hold. Has no more hold. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, 14, and 29. He has no more hold. Ashma must leave your body. He could be in the life of your father. He has no right to hang on your body. Know you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whatever defile it must be destroyed. Therefore, I speak over your life today. You are rescued from every generational cause. From every generational affliction. We have people in scriptures. Noah was an instrument to save his family. Genesis 7.13. He saved his entire family from the flood. He saved his entire family. Abraham in Genesis 22. 16 to 18 save his entire family from poverty and penury and generational affliction Genesis 22 verse 16 to 19 we have the story of Joseph in Genesis 45 verse 5 to 7 Joseph save his entire family from famine relocated them and perfected their life Joseph I pray for you, through you, your family shall be saved. <laughs> now I'm going to be prophesying over somebody that his heart is open today. God is going to lift you. <laughs> and through you, you will lift your brothers and sisters. <laughs> God will give you a prominent appointment. <laughs> That's why you have to wake up. There are people here that are guilty of that. You get appointment, juicy place, and you don't remember any of your siblings. It's a cause, sir. But today I'm prophesying over your life. God will give you juicy appointment, <laughs> juicy job, <laughs> juicy position. That you will save your family from poverty. <laughs> that through you, you will settle your brothers. <laughs> you settle your sisters. Whatever will not allow you to remember your brothers and sisters, they are causing your life in the name of Jesus. We have also Esther. In Esther chapter 4 and chapter 5, she was the one instrumental. She became the queen of the land and through her, she rescued our nation. God is putting you in that position. I love you so much and I'm prophesying this into your life. Is your heart open? Is your heart open today? From this service today, I count seven weeks for you. That the God of heaven will rescue your family. Through you. Give you a big job. Job that will save your family. Will save your village. God will give you special appointment. God will give you special deliverance. In the name of Jesus. And save you today. One of the things you must do is to make sure at every time 
minister salvation to your siblings. Because even if they get prosperous, if they are not born again, it's just for the short time. There are some of you that have been blessed in appointment and through the appointment you have, you help one or two of your siblings. But because Jesus is not in their heart, they mess up the opportunity. There are some of them, you give them hundreds of, of naira to, to do into business so that they can find their food and help others. But because there is no light in them, they squander the money. They need salvation first. Minister salvation to them. Bring them to church. That is when they can be established and this light will spread. I pray for you today. Every generational issue on your family, generational trouble is over today. In a moment, we're going to be rising up and be pleading the blood. He said, Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him by the blood of a lamb. So whatever siege that is upon your family, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17 to 21, it was a horn of the Gentiles that won't allow anybody to rise. And today, as we take up the blood of Jesus, Zechariah chapter 9, from verse 11, 12, and 13, because of the blood, he said, he has rescued you from the pit wherein there is no water. As you take of this communion today, he said, my blood is, 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 is uh, my, 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 my blood is drink indeed. And my flesh is meat indeed. I like you to face this communion table today without life. You and your family saved. You and your generation saved. The verdict of evil over your generation is over today. Cornelius and the jailer were saved and their household. Acts chapter 10, verse 24 and 44. The Cornelius and his house were saved. The jailer and his house were saved. Acts 16, 30 to 33. The jailer was saved. Today I speak, your father shall be saved. Your mo mother shall be saved. Your siblings shall be saved. Today, as we pray here, salvation will enter into the house. He says, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down from where you are. Today, salvation enter your house. I pray and I speak. The spirit of salvation, the spirit of redemption will enter your household. It will spread like life fire. You will hear, ah, what is that? I'm born again now. I attend to redeem. I'm born again now. It's deeper life I'm attending. I'm born again now. I'm, I'm also in winners. How many will be excited when you hear that from your siblings? Glory to God. Those that are preaching will enter your family house. Say amen. These are the prayers you should say amen. All those that are doing evangelism about, they will enter your house. They will catch your brother. You have been preaching, preaching. He's not hearing you. All those people preaching will catch them. Street evangelism will catch them. Family deliverance evangelism will catch them. Amen. I pray the next seven weeks, your entire house shall be born again. Amen. Every force that is working against your salvation shall be destroyed. Amen. Rise upon your feet and begin to pray. Pray. Pray for your family. Is somebody, do you love your family at all? If you love your brother and sister, pray for them now. Today is our covenant family day. Salvation, salvation. Pray for their salvation first. Before you pray for their deliverance, pray for their salvation. Oh God, touch them. Oh God, change them. Oh God, save them today. And if you are here, you are not born again, pray for your salvation. The reason for that trouble in your family is because you are not born again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. All oh, let's bow eyes closed. You are here. You are now born again. I'd like to pray for you to be saved. Until you are born again, your family cannot be saved. Wherever you are, you know you are a sinner. There is a cause of your life. Things are not working. Everything is bad. And you know it's because you have not handed over your life to Jesus. Bow your heads, everyone. I'd like to pray for such people. You want to be born again or rededicate your life to Jesus? Please lift up your hand. And I will pray for you. And you shall be saved. Lift up your hand. And say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, save me today. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood. 
I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, brother, please come. Come, brother, come. Come, 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 sir. Come, come, come. You pray that prayer, please come. Come. The yes, fountain of come, life come. is flowing everywhere. Please come, come. Who so ever drink, please come. Shall I'm never for you. ever thirst again. You are the back, please come. It's flowing everywhere. You are the who so ever drinks. Shall I never ever thirst again. The fountain of life always flowing everywhere. Whosoever drinks shall never ever thirst again. It's flowing everywhere. Whosoever drinks shall never ever thirst again. Hallelujah. The steward should take position now as you take this communion. Please note this. As you take the communion, the blood of it, put it on that paper in your hand. And the family will be saved. God told me, he said, it's all these small, small things that works. And if you neglect it, you know, you know, that's why I say, when I say cut paper, you cut paper. You pour this blood on it. And it will travel to Enugu, travel to Abuja, travel to London. Wherever they are, it will catch them. It will save them. And deliver them. For those in front, I pray that salvation enter into your spirit today. The power of evil over your life is broken. The hold of the enemy in your generation is destroyed. Salvation enter into your heart, receive eternal life, and be blessed in Jesus' name. Please follow this, our brother. He will share a word with you. We receive this today as a body and the blood of Jesus. We declare it for our healing, our salvation. Say amen now. Our deliverance and our rescue. As we take it today, the power of evil is over in our lives. All the spirit of death, untimely death, all the spirit of sickness and disease, all the throat, throat spirit of poverty and, and, and retrogression. We have there is a family here, two people who are very mighty in your family. They are very rich. But a few years ago, the two of them at the same time, you know you are the one I'm talking about. The two of them at the same time went down and every darkness covered the entire family because they were the light but there was an arrow shot from somewhere and that was the end they brought the light and the family down but as you take this communion those two people as i'm speaking now they are rising start from now and the light will catch up with everybody as we take this communion there is a fresh connection by the covenant of the blood and the body of jesus into healing and deliverance amen. say a good amen. amen into blessing and breakthroughs amen. the hold of darkness over our life is shattered for forever amen. i declare your healing at the table amen. your deliverance at the table amen. your soul is escaped from the snare of the fowler amen. and today i declare your bless amen. so shall it be amen. please take your seat let's take a communion
God. I said, glory to God. Lift up those papers. I declare today that the blessing of God is released over your families. Through you shall all the families, all your families shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. The causes, spell, and enchantment over your family is over forever. Your family is blessed. Blessed. Blessed with breakthrough. Blessed with favor. Blessed with turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Blessed with prosperity. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Please remember our turnaround hour prayer is 5 p.m. tomorrow. And the junior Bible school starts tomorrow for all children from, uh, I think, all the children and teenagers in the church. The Youth Alive Convention is just three, two days to go. And so all youth after the third service will be having a meeting for the preparation for this great program. Next Sunday is our Enough is Enough service. Are you excited? And it's an anointing service when you are coming bring a bottle of oil please remember also next week we're going to be next sunday we'll be putting up welfare offerings either money or material things to help those that i need the lord bless you this wednesday is going to be a great service and the team is no more lack today is your first sunday in our church i'd like to welcome you as we close the service wherever you are today is your first sunday in living faith church Swali Yenegua. please come 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 to the altar. Come to the altar. Come quickly. Come quickly. Amen. Everyone lift up your hands as they come. Go in peace. Amen. The blessing of the Lord follow you as you go. Amen. If you are coming, come quickly. Come quickly. Everyone put your hands together. They are coming from everywhere. Come quickly if you are coming. This week shall be the best of week for you. Amen. Whatever has blocked your family is taken away forever. Today, things will begin to work for your family. Favor will answer for your family. You'll be hearing testimony from your siblings. Home abroad, they'll be shouting and be giving you testimony. The causes are over. The troubles are over. The sicknesses are over. The diseases are over. The failures are over. They will begin to get jobs, appointments, businesses, helpers in the name of Jesus so shall it be in Jesus name I bless you today and I pray that the hand of the Lord rest upon you the grace of the Lord increase in your life and be blessed in Jesus name please follow this our brother everyone let's share the goodness together surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever amen peace welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turn around then expect on around to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. The second service starts right away. We start the second service right away. You are in for the second service. Please come in right away. God bless you. Hallelujah!